morning again. <laughs> We're going to try something new so the people on the other side of the camera get to see this. Oh, hey, <clears throat> if COVID did nothing more, it made us all televangelists. Yes. Anyway, um, we're going to uh, hopefully get this recorded for a worship standpoint and have people be able to enjoy that on the other side of the camera. Uh, so if you love to sing, those that are you are here that love to sing loud, like I do, and off key, like I really do, you know, um, keep that in mind. Uh, it's a joyful noise to the Lord by all means. Things to pray about this morning. Yes. Yes, we got an insurance little thing to get fixed. In. Yes. Need a bigger doctor's note. Yes. What else? Yes, continue the prayer with the Lee family. I have not heard from uh, the Lee family this morning, uh, but I'm thinking, you know. No news is easy to do, yeah, usually, so there you go. Um, TJ. Yeah, TJ, continue, uh, pray with, with her. I'm traveling. Traveling for you as you, yes, go back to California. We really pray for you. <laughs> so uh, be ready this uh, afternoon. There are storms in the area. Keep that in mind. That could go a number of different ways. Uh, with that, so uh, severe thunder thunderstorms today. Storm rolling in, breaking up. So it's yeah, it's fifty fifty. Yeah. So if you want to do something, it'll be. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for another opportunity to come and worship you, Lord God. <clears throat> We ask that your hand would continue to be on the B family, continue to be with Anne, as well as they both uh, progress toward healing and wholeness, Lord Jesus. Lord, you know the hurdles of even the finances with insurance and stuff that goes with both situations. Lord, we continue to pray for those that are not with us this morning. We ask that your hand would be on them and with them. Traveling mercies for our guests this morning as well. And certainly we lift your name up on high for the great things that you have done and continue to do in our lives. And for this, Lord, we give you praise. Lord, I pray our worship this morning will continue to be acceptable to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. stumble again I'm caught in your grace everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all fame in my heart in my soul I give you control consume me from the Justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. You will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting.
just I'm looking I'm caught in your grace Everlasting Your light will shine when all else fades Never ending Your glory goes beyond all things In my heart, in my soul Justice and praise Become my embrace To love you from the inside out Everlasting Your light will shine When all else fades Never ending Your glory goes beyond all fame And the cry of my heart Is to
than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name Christ alone Stone, weak, made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face. like to turn your Bibles or your electronic devices <clears throat> or whatever it is that you choose to use. Um, <clears throat> John chapter 20, we'll pick it up this morning in verse 19 and uh, go from there. I want to ask you a question though. <clears throat> Do you believe in the law of gravity? I, I would think that that's 
pretty much a done deal. Um, and allow me to teach you a little bit of, you know, if you choose to go into the field of EMS and you take a patient that was a fall victim into the hospital on a very busy day, responding to the nurse that says, well, what caused the fall? The answer is not gravity. Just in case you, you know, it just, it, it didn't went, it didn't go well. <laughs> Let's just go with that. <clears throat> Although truth, <laughs> it didn't go well. But I want to ask you, you believe in the law of gravity. Okay. And, and we, we do that simply because if I were to take anything today, I mean, we'll just take a piece of paper and, you know, now the camera probably won't be able to see it, but if we toss it out there, guess what? It eventually falls to the ground. And I'd be willing to bet that if I did that over and over throughout the next maybe 30-ish, give or take minutes, I'm thinking it's going to more so end up on the ground than it is going to float in the air. Right? <clears throat> we believe in the law of gravity. <clears throat> One of Jesus' disciples had a problem with believing that Jesus rose from the dead. And we're going to look at that this morning, beginning in verse 19, chapter 20. <clears throat> On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Now, if, if you will, um, just setting the, 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 giving you the setting here and a couple of different things um, with that. So Jesus on the morning of, of, you know, Friday, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. All right. This would be first day of the week. Sunday morning, Mary would have been there. All right. And uh, at, at the tomb. Okay. And then um, we're caught talking early afternoon, the two gentlemen walking to on the road to Emmaus and Jesus appears talking to them. This would be again that evening. And there are stories that are circulating that Jesus is making appearances with that. Um, and, and few people are, are at the point where they can say, I've seen the Lord. But the majority of them are like, uh, yeah, well, here's what we do know. We know that we saw him die. We know that the tomb is empty, all right? But that whole, are you sure that it wasn't, you know, I'm, I'm, I am certainly concerned, you know, that some of the disciples are like, I'm thinking I know these guys, been hanging around with these, this group of people for the last three plus years. I've worked with them on a number of different occasions, businesses, whatever. <sighs> I'm really just not sure if they didn't get a bad piece of pizza the other night, you know, people seeing the Lord kind of a thing. Well, here comes Jesus now in a, in a, in a spot, doors are locked and, and he makes this appearance. Now his words with them are peace be with you. And, I, and I'm pretty certain if I was in the room, you know, um, I'd have to have a little bit of coaching of this is weird. You know, I'm not opposed to the weird. I'm not opposed to the miraculous either, because I've certainly seen it in my lifetime and, and over the years. But with the doors being locked, with, you know, all the things that have been going on, and Jesus comes in and, and stands among them with this. And his first words are peace with you. Now, again, um, this is not typically out of character in terms of the greeting. Why? Because, you know, you if you go to Israel, which I've had the privilege of doing, you know, and you talk with some of the shopkeepers, you know, as you enter even the shopkeepers, one of the greetings is, as Stephanie had just said right now, shalom, peace, peace to you. That's That's not terribly uncommon with that, but I'm thinking it had a little bit more, more meaning to that. After he says these things, verse 20, moving on, he shows them his hands. He shows them uh, his side. Now, John, and again, this is just a, a principle of, of, of peace 
of, of, of information. The book of John or the gospel of John is the only reference that shows the particular to his side being pierced. The other is just a showing of the hands in the other gospels. Once they realize with them uh, what's going on, of course, the disciples overjoyed as, as we see that. Verse 21, moving on with it. And he says again, peace be with you. Continuing, he says, as the Father has sent me, I now send you. My work here is done. When Jesus said it is finished on the cross, it was much more than just his life at the time of being the sacrificial lamb. His ministry came to an end. Guess what? Ours began. Ours started with a beginning to continue that which he had started. <clears throat> As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. <clears throat> with that, um, Jesus breathed out. Now, now there's a there's a thing here, all right, and <clears throat> we're going to walk through it, all right? <clears throat> With that, verse 22, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. An old covenant from the Father from the Old Testament, watch this, a new covenant now from the Son, okay? Go back with me to, to Genesis, think about this. God made man out of the dust in the earth, and what did he do to give him life? breathed into him. What does he do in the new covenant now? Breathes onto us to go forward with the mission that we have. We sing a song uh, as a chorus that I think has way more meaning than what we give it, give it service to. This is the air that I breathe. Why? It is the air that we breathe because it's his air we get to breathe. It's his air from his atmosphere, from his word, world, from his opportunity that he has given us life to go for. Greatest gift possible. Then he continues on, receive the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, some folks get a little here with this. I'm, I'm going to, to, to work this as... as Gently as and as easily as I can. This is not the same event as the baptism, if you will. This is the event of the conviction of the Holy Spirit that says we got to do something different with our lives. This is what calls us to repentance. Okay? The baptism of the Holy Spirit that, that where the gifts come from, all right, as we see in Acts chapter two, after Jesus leaves, okay, not a second or a continuing, just a different event, all right? So before we get in, in, into that controversy, that's where that is. Some scholars even say, this is where we get to be born again. Hence the breath, the breathing. In any case, Holy Spirit comes upon us. In any case, Holy Spirit comes upon us. We get to have the eternal life that he did. We get to breathe his air. We get to move forward with the things that he's called us to do. <clears throat> Moving on to chapter 20, verse 23. <clears throat> if you forgive anybody's sins, your sins are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they are not forgiven. And I'm thinking here, as I'm studying this passage, what... <clears throat> what a gift, yes, but yet, wow, what an authority. <clears throat> the authority to forgive sins is linked direct, directly with the promised presence of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Here, the fact of the matter is, it is the church, if you will, folks, not individuals. Now, before we get all weirded out and things, you know, and we get to, we get to pass judgment, allow me to tell you something. Our purpose isn't to sit here and be the judge before we get all, you know, wrapped up in this. Our purpose is to bring people into the presence of God. He gets to do the judging in his time. We get to go out with the message. There's two different things here. <clears throat> so be, before, because I'll tell you, there's a number of folks that have had trouble with this. 
over the years. Because, I mean, if you balance this thing out, even with Jesus taught us on the Sermon of the Mount, who does the judging? Yeah, not us, right? The forgiveness of sins is, is literally bringing people into the presence, the kingdom of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit do the convicting. Let the Holy Spirit do the forgiving. Right? Does that belittle on what we're doing? I'll tell you something. The, the authority does rest with us. Yes. Okay. I, I get that. But the, the, the action is not designed that we get to go, yeah, you get to, you get to get forgiven of that one, but you don't get to get forgiven of the other one. Our job is not to judge. <clears throat> Our job is is to again, and I want to stress this over and over again, because I'll tell you something, we armchair quarterback this Sunday morning thing on a regular basis. And, you know, um, yeah, watch your toes because I'm going to preach on it right here. And I may step on them, mine too. But how many times do we sit here and we pass our little judgment thing going, well, look at who that person is doing. Who cares and what does it matter? Look, does that person come into the presence of Jesus and has enough information based on what we're telling them, what we're teaching them, and what we're doing to live our lives for Christ? Because as I have said it over and over again, if we can't have people see Jesus in us, we're doing it wrong. Doubting Thomas in verse 24 and 25. And, and this is where I'm bringing to wrap it up with the whole picture here. Now there's Thomas, one of the 12. Originally was not with Jesus at the time of this event. He's also known as the twin. Um, and, and here comes the opportunity where Thomas joins the group at some point and, and he says in verse, or they say to him in verse 25, we've seen the Lord. But Thomas says, unless I see the nail marks and unless I put my fingers where the nails were and I, lest I put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now, <clears throat> you can give Thomas as much extension as you want, need, choose to, or whatever. <clears throat> but I want to ask you, as I asked you this morning, to what point does Jesus have to demonstrate to you that you would believe? I remember, <clears throat> I remember a couple times in my world trying to make a decision on a, on a couple of different things. Am I going left or right or, or this way or that way? And there's been a couple of times it's just been, unless I see lightning in the sky and it's like, you know, careful what you wish for, <clears throat> especially in the Midwest. But the simple fact of the matter, somebody came along and said, why do you need any more proof to the fact of what God has told you to go do what he said to do? Just go preach the word. He'll figure out where you're going in the next. Another, another person came along one day, um, apparently Bible school worked a little bit, not just in the Bible course of things, but when <clears throat> one of my instructors during a class that I actually was listening to, I know, shocking, right, <clears throat> said this, when you're in the will of God, location just doesn't matter. When you're doing the business of God, location really just doesn't matter. I've heard of a number of even, even pastors and uh, had said at times, well, I hope God doesn't call me to, or even other people who have struggled with knowing where they were going and resisting at it. And I've even had a couple of them go, yeah, I've been there, done that. That's why I'm like, I really hope God doesn't send me to Hawaii. Hallelujah. However that works with you, I don't know. But here's, here's, here's what I do know. Regardless of where your calling is to preach the word, regardless of, of the, the event or events, plural, that you may be uh, 
bless you, that you may be dealing with um, or struggling with or more importantly, arguing with God with how many more times than what he has already laid before you that are you going to have him Watch your toes, because here it comes. Have him do the circus event to prove to you the fleece has been wet or dry or how many things you're going to set out. When God said it already, however many months, weeks, years, or whatever's ago, he's just waiting for you to get on the train to get moving to go about his business. <clears throat> A week later, in verse 26... Jesus stands amongst them again. Again, the house was locked. Probably meeting in secret. Shows up and says, peace be with you. And yeah, probably disturbing as it was again. Of course, the supernatural has been going on for the last week. Pretty, pretty weird. And I'm thinking the disciples like, all right, here he is again. This is great. This is cool. How do we do the door thing again? I don't know. That's how I'd be thinking about it. <clears throat> but he goes right up to Thomas and says, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out, touch my side. And here's the command when you look at the Greek. Here is the command. Stop doubting and go about with my business and belief. Verse 28, finally Thomas says, my Lord and my God comes to the point of believing. And Jesus' response to him, and quite honestly to us, because you've seen me, you believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet still believe. And I will tell you, the blessing is not so much, if you will, about believing, embracing. The blessing is just going about his business, what he's called us to do. Somebody asked me one time, on a number of different occasions, but I, <clears throat> some of you and a lot of you know that I, I work on a number of different uh, relief teams on the state side and the federal side. And I've gotten called out to do a couple of, of very different assignments over the years um, with that. And I won't go into a lot of them at all, but one of them I was going into several years ago that was quite a bit more politically controversial based on where you decided to, to do that. <clears throat> And um, and somebody asked me, why would you go do that? I said, because I'm a chaplain, I'm called by Christ. And they asked a chaplain to go into a dark area and I'm going to bring Jesus Christ to it. And that's what I did. Now, granted, there wasn't a lot of preaching. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> I only held two Bible studies formally. But I'll tell you, they weren't looking at the Bible studies. I'm going to close with this example this morning. And, and a, many of you have heard this on a number of different occasions with it. But it still comes to where I'm at with it this morning today. I remember a number of years ago when I was youth pastor and we'd go to Six Flags, California. And this was an annual summer. We'd do it two, at least two times, sometimes three, depending on what was going on and, and that kind of a deal. But it was one of the big attractions of what we did for the summer, you know, uh, events kind of a deal. <clears throat> and so um, as much as those kids may have loved me as much as I want to design or whatever, I did, of course, you know, have them do the meeting things just so, you know, one kid said, why do you have us meet? So I know at least at certain points of the day, you still were alive. And, you know, if I have to answer to your parents with it. So, um, so everybody buddied up and this and that and that kind of a thing. And I said, okay, be back at whatever. And I went and checked something and I looked up and, you know, they were gone. It was me by myself. And I'm like, well, I guess I know how I rate. <clears throat> so anyway, they have this ride called the Log Jam. Log jammer, and one of the reasons why I liked it was because the log jammer set up on top, and when you went through the line, you were up underneath, and there was just enough 
of a of a leak of the water dripping down that you can you know kind of stay cool more importantly you were out of the sun and it wasn't all that bad of a ride either but more importantly you were out of the sun <clears throat> so i'm sitting here in this log jam and ride you know line and it is loaded it is going to be an hour and a half i'm like well i'm by myself so it's not that big of a deal so <clears throat> i finally get into the crisscrossing part you know back and forth and back and forth. Well, about five or six, you know, lines up, there's a group of the youth kids that are sitting there. And I've shared this story a number of times before with it. And they're like, Pastor Rob, so much for in being incognito, right? <clears throat> and so as, as the story goes, and we're going kind of back and forth with this, and they're like, come on up and ride with us. Now, hot summer day, not a lot of people happy with it <clears throat> about lion jumping. But <clears throat> certainly over the next half hour, this keeps going on. And, and now as we're getting toward the end of this half hour, you can see them yelling at us with the crowd going. And then them looking at the whole crowd shifting back to me. <clears throat> Well, yes, entertaining, good point, but allow me to tell you what sermon was about to get preached that day. And I think there were some people rooting for me to jump the line, just to, you know. And of course, my response was, hey, just, you know, let a couple people go through and eventually I'll catch up to you. Well, eventually that happened, but I'm going to tell you that whatever day it was, it wasn't Sunday, it wasn't in a cushy pew, it wasn't with the sound system that was or was not working, but a sermon got preached that day. <clears throat> we are called to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We're called to, to not only believe that, but to, to communicate that to a world that is lost, and quite honestly, <clears throat> quite honestly, thinks upside down is right side up. And if you don't believe me, I dare you to turn on the news for even 20 minutes and watch the crowds protesting the opportunity to kill babies. Because it's no longer about the choice. It is literally about people standing there yelling into cameras, I want my right to kill my baby. I've watched that. Pick any news source, conservatives, lib conservative, liberal, or otherwise, it doesn't matter. We are no longer euphemizing it by allowing it to be the choice of a woman. We've straight up come out and said, I want the right to do what I want to do. And if that comes along to kill my baby, that's what I'm going to get to do. And nobody's going to tell me any different about it. That's where we're at today. This is the lost world that we get the opportunity, yes, I just said it like that, to tell them that there's another way, a better way, an eternal life way. The question is, do you believe? Do you believe? I believe in the law of gravity. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe I get eternal life with him. And I believe there's a world out there that is looking for a truth that still buys into a lie. But let me tell you something. When they know that the world is upside down, what do you expect? Because when right side up comes around, you're like, hey, that ain't wrong. Well, it's only wrong because it's what they don't want. It's the only thing they've understood. <clears throat> we had a small little discussion here today uh, and just about some of the outreaches that we're going, um, going about with that. And nothing wrong with them by any means, but I'll tell you something, we go where, where the people is at. And when we do that, we go and we share Jesus every chance we do that with. And as St. Francis of Assisi is, boy, if we have to risk it and use words, I will. But I really hope they see Jesus. See Jesus in action doing the things he needs to do. God, help us to go about his business with that. And if we have to use words, let them, oh God, come from the power of the Holy Spirit.
Would you pray with me, please? Father God, thank you for your grace. Thank you that you saw me worthy enough to be saved from the sins that I committed as a sinner before I even got on the planet. Lord God, help us to go about sharing your gospel message any way, opportunity that comes along. And let us not lose sight of the goal, and that is to build your kingdom. Father God, we pray again for the, the, the healing power that you have given to us in our bodies, that you will continue the work that you have done, that, Lord God, you will continue through paperwork, Lord God, that you will continue the healing process. Lord Jesus, for others that on the other side of the camera that may or may not have issues going on, as they lift up those prayers, we agree with them, <coughs> that your hand would be upon them in Jesus' name. And Father God, when we go about your business, as we prayed a number of times here, and we continue to do that as well. When people see us, Lord God, oh God, let us live a life that they see you more than anything else. And if that's your prayer this morning, I invite you to say amen. And God bless you as you go about kingdom business and his business.